we already talked about why the intersection of the supply and demand curves is in equilibrium, and we talked about some of the efficiency properties of that equilibrium in terms of maximizing the gains from trade. Now, let's go ahead and start talking about changes in equilibrium. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring back some of the buyer and seller data that we had, and we're going to add a whole lot of new buyers to our market. Initially, we just had Allison and Brittany and Cody and Dennis and Eppel, but I'm going to go ahead and add a new buyer at all the different price levels and willingnesses to pay. We're going to keep the sellers the same. So we're going to have more buyers and we're going to have a shift in the position of the demand curve because of that. And you can go ahead and go back to the second of the basics of demand lecture to see that. As a test for yourself, you can go ahead and try to figure out the following two questions. The old equilibrium price was $42. With this new higher level of demand, would there be a shortage or surplus of tickets? And how big would that shortage or surplus be? We can also go ahead and look at that new data and try to identify a new price that will cause equilibrium in this market. And remember, equilibrium is a situation where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. So you want to look for a price that is going to cause the number of buyers willing to buy to be equal to the number of sellers willing to sell. You can go ahead and see in this graph about where that price is going to be. It's going to be somewhere in the lower 50s. And you can go ahead and look at the numbers for the willingness to pay and the seller costs to pin that down a little bit more exactly. So, Hopefully the first part of this is pretty easy. Did the increase in demand cause prices to increase or decrease? And did the increase in demand cause quantity transacted to increase or decrease? Those should be pretty basic. And you should be able to read them off the previous graph by looking at where the new intersection of supply and demand is compared to the old intersection of supply and demand. A little bit trickier, is the second question on this slide. Did the increase in demand cause consumer surplus to increase or decrease? And did the increase in demand cause producer surplus to increase or decrease? And you'll have to do a little math by plugging in the new equilibrium price and recalculating consumer surplus and producer surplus here. As we're going through our supply and demand problems, there are a couple memory aids that I would bring up here that sh hopefully should help you keep things straight. First is that the demand curve slopes down. And that's because the demand curve represents the fact that when prices go up, people buy less. And when prices go down, people buy more. If the demand curve sloped up, we'd be saying that as prices rise, people buy more which doesn't quite seem right. Supply slopes up. So they both have the word up in them. So hopefully that'll keep your supply curve pointing the correct way. And the upward slope of the supply curve represents the fact that if you offer suppliers a higher price, they will be willing to sell you more units. If we drew it the other way, if we drew a downward sloping supply curve, we would be saying that as you offered sellers a higher price, they were willing to sell you fewer units, which wouldn't quite make sense. So when you're drawing your initial demand curve, you want to make sure it's downward sloping. When you're drawing your additional supply curve, you want to make sure it's upward sloping. And then when we come to shifting the curves, remember that a leftward shift is a lower level of supply or demand. So left is less and correspondingly right is more. So going back several slides here, 
we see that the demand curve shifted and people often sort of go, okay, I know that the increase in demand will cause an increase in prices and therefore an increase in price causes it to be more profitable to supply so I should shift the supply curve right. So lots and lots of students look at things that way but you don't need to do that because everything we need to know about the relationship between price and quantity supplied is already built into the upward slope of the supply curve. So what we often say here is we had a shift to a whole new demand curve here and that caused an increase in prices and that increase in prices caused a movement along the supply curve. So the other thing to think about here is the position of the supply and demand curves are influenced by the things that suppliers directly care about and buyers directly care about. So the position of the supply curve is influenced by the thing that suppliers directly care about other than price and the position of the demand curve is influenced by the things that buyers directly care about. And suppliers don't directly care about the number of potential buyers. As it says here, they only care about the number of potential buyers indirectly because the number of potential buyers impacts the equilibrium price. But everything we need to know about how price affects supplier behavior is already built into the upward slope of the supply curve. And if you find yourself accidentally shifting the supply curve in these sorts of examples, know that you're not alone. That's a really common mistake for people to make as they're getting their first several supply and demand problems under their belt. So again, and I'm just going to hammer on this, and the way that I'm hammering, hammering on this is a signal of how many times um, students often struggle with this. We want to distinguish between a movement along a curve versus a shift to a whole new curve. The shape of each curve and the slope of each curve tells us about the relationship between price and quantity. So the downward slope of the demand curve tells us that as prices go up, quantity demanded goes down. So as a goods price changes, we're moving along the demand curve. But when something else changes besides price and it influences demand, like the number of consumers, then we shift to a whole new curve. So to test you on that, consider the following questions. If the price of eggs rises but nothing else changes, how is that going to affect the demand curve? Should we shift the demand curve left? Should we shift the demand curve right? Should we move up and to the left along the demand curve? Should we move down and to the right along the demand curve? So you can go ahead and go to my CR and try that one. Here are several example questions, and I'm going to go ahead and ask that you try to do these on your own. Try to draw these problems out. And then, in the next video segment, I'm going to go ahead and run through how I would analyze these problems.